said my mother, when I was knee high. You've need of clothes to cover you, and not a rag have I. There's nothing in the house to make a boy breeches, nor shears to cut a cloth with, nor thread to take stitches. There's nothing in the house but a loaf end of rye, and a half with a woman's head nobody will buy. You are listening yes, to the voice of Edna St. Vincent Millay That's reading The Ballad of the Harp Weaver, a page from this Sunday's edition of Anthology. temporarily replacing our anthology theme with a familiar music that is so much a part of the spirit of the Christmas season. Each Sunday at 6.30, WRCA, in cooperation with the Poetry Center of the YM and YWHA, 92nd Street and Lexington Avenue in Manhattan, brings you Anthology, a selection of readings from poets, past and present, and the music to accompany their poetry. This week, Poetry for Christmas, by transcription, Edna St. Vincent Millay reading her beloved Ballad of the Harp Weaver and Dylan Thomas' delightful and tender A Child's Christmas in Wales, recorded, too, by the poet himself. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. beauty of the gospel according to St. Luke as told in the Holy Bible, we turn to the poetic beauty of another miracle wrought on another Christmas Eve. Although many people see in Edna St. Vincent Millay's Ballad of the Harp Weaver an imaginative or transposed tribute to her mother, the poem, published in 1923, has come down through the years more as a tender and loving testimony of devotion and faith, the deep devotion of a mother for her son, the faith which is the very essence of Christmas itself. We're very happy to be able not only to bring the poem to you on our Christmas edition of Anthology, but to be able to bring it to you further enhanced by the magic of the poet's voice. Edna St. Vincent Millay reads The Ballad of the Harp Weaver. Son, said my mother, when I was knee-high, you've need of clothes to cover you, 
And not a rag have I. There's nothing in the house to make a boy breeches, nor shears to cut a cloth with, nor thread to take stitches. There's nothing in the house but a loaf end of rye, and a harp with a woman's head nobody will buy. And she began to cry. That was in the early fall. When came the late fall, son, she said, the sight of you makes your mother's blood crawl. Little skinny shoulder blades sticking through your clothes. And where you'll get a jacket from, God above knows. It's lucky for me, lad, your daddy's in the ground and can't see the way I let his son go around. And she made a queer sound. That was in the late fall. When the winter came, I'd not a pair of bitches nor a shirt to my name. I couldn't go to school or out of doors to play. And all the other little boys passed our way. Son, said my mother, come climb into my lap. And I'll chafe your little bones while you take a nap. And oh, but we were silly for half an hour or more. Me with my long legs dragging on the floor. A rock, rock, rocking to a mother goose rhyme. Oh, but we were happy for half an hour's time. But there was I, a great boy. And what would folks say to hear my mother singing me to sleep all day in such a daft way? Men say the winter was bad that year. Fuel was scarce. And food was dear. A wind with a wolf's head howled about our door. And we burned up the chairs and sat upon the floor. All that was left us was a chair we couldn't break. And the harp with a woman's head nobody would take for song or pity's sake. The night before Christmas, I cried with the cold. I cried myself to sleep like a two-year-old, and in the deep night, I felt my mother rise and stare down upon me with love in her eyes. I saw my mother sitting on the one good chair, a light falling on her from I couldn't tell where, looking 19 and not a day older, and the half with a woman's head leaned against her shoulder. Her thin fingers moving in the thin, tall strings were weave, weave, weaving wonderful things. Many bright threads from where I couldn't see were running through the half strings rapidly and gold threads whistling through my mother's hand. I saw the web grow and the pattern expand. She wove a child's jacket and when it was done, she laid it on the floor and wove another one. She wove a red cloak, so regal to see. She's made it for a king's son. I said, and not for me. But I knew it was for me. She wove a pair of bitches, quicker than that. She wove a pair of boots and a little cocked hat. She wove a pair of mittens. She wove a little blouse. She wove all night in the still, cold house. She sang as she worked. And the half string spoke. Her voice never faltered, and the thread never broke. And when I awoke, there sat my mother with the half against her shoulder, looking nineteen and not a day older, a smile about her lips and a light about her head, and her hands in the half strings, frozen, dead, and piled up beside her and toppling to the skies where the clothes of a king's son just my Size. Edna St. Vincent Millay reading The Ballad of the Harp Weaver on a recently reissued RCA Victor long playing record. Our second Christmas story is also from an LP album, and we're extremely grateful to Barbara Cohen and Marion Roney of Cadman Records for granting us special permission to bring you A Child's Christmas in Wales, as remembered, written, and spoken by the great Welsh poet. Dylan Thomas. There is little we can say as a preface to this magnificent and moving work other than that we strongly feel that as the years pass, it must surely take its place among the great Christmas classics of world literature. 
We invite you now to live again those warm and wonderful childhood memories to which we all cling so fondly as Dylan Thomas relives A Child's Christmas in Wales.